One of every filmmaker's worst nightmares is getting shaky footage. Shaky footage is a sign of a beginner filmmaker. It looks unprofessional and, to be honest, a bit nauseating. So in order to be a pro filmmaker, I want to help you to figure out how to get smooth, cinematic footage by using different stabilizers that can help you get rid of those dreaded shaky camera movements. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for shaky camera movements. If you're shooting a fight scene or a heavy metal rock music video, some shaky camera movements can sometimes look good, if done properly. But for 90% of the time, your footage will look the best being shot with a stabilizer. So I'm gonna walk you through the different kinds of stabilizers that are out there, which ones you would use in different situations, and which kinds of stabilizers I'd recommend in each category. The first and most common type of a stabilizer is a tripod. Tripods are most commonly used when filming a person talking where any kind of camera movement would be distracting from the story. Tripod shots are also the easiest to get and for that reason they can sometimes look a little bland or boring. So personally, I try and stay away from tripod shots unless I feel like it would look the absolute best. Tripods will run you anywhere from $25 to a few thousand dollars. The cheaper tripods will break easily and won't be able to hold very much weight, so make sure you get a good tripod that has good reviews and will be able to hold the weight of your camera without breaking. I'd recommend getting a Manfrotto tripod with a fluid head because that will allow you to get smooth panning and tilting shots, which has been an absolute must for me. One step up from a tripod is a slider or a dolly. Slider and dolly shots are similar to the shot that you get on a tripod, but they add a little bit of sliding movement to make the shot more interesting. Slider shots are most commonly used for getting sit-down interviews, slow music videos, or shots where you need to get a slow camera movement that has absolute precision. The cheapest sliders are around $100, and the slider that I use is a motorized slider that can turn as it's sliding to keep your subject in the frame, and that one is closer to $2,000. Also, it's worth noting that if you're using a slider, you'll probably need two tripods, one to put on each end of the slider so that it doesn't tilt as your camera is weighing down one side or the other. Next up on the list of stabilizers is a gimbal. This is the most common type of stabilizer for a moving shot that you'd want to be smooth without being tied down to a slider. There are normal three axis gimbals like a glide cam which I use and then there are electronic gimbals which do a lot of the work for you to help you get smooth moving shots and there are pros and cons to each the glide cam has a more natural look and gives you more freedom in your movement but it takes a lot more practice to get the hang of it and it's usually heavier and puts more strain on your body electronic gimbals are easier to use and better for getting hundred percent smooth shots but are a bit more restricting when it comes to what kind of shots you can get and they sometimes look a little too robotic and smooth for my taste but they are different tools used for different purposes and I would use one for some projects and the other for different projects depending on what the project needed. Each gimbal has a certain amount of weight that it can hold so make sure that you know how heavy your setup is before you buy a gimbal. With a normal three axis gimbal I would not buy any gimbal less than $200 because they just don't work very well. For a three axis gimbal I'd recommend a Glidecam HD Pro or a Flycam Red King which is about half the price if you can't afford a Glidecam and for a motorized gimbal I'd recommend a DJI Ronin SC for lighter cameras up to four pounds or or a DJI Ronin S for heavier cameras up to eight pounds. Next up on the list of stabilizers is a shoulder mount. A shoulder mount doesn't necessarily give you smooth shots like a gimbal or a slider does, but it does take away a lot of the shakiness that you would get from a handheld shot. I also use a shoulder mount when I want to be able to control the zoom or focus on my camera in the middle of a shot because I'm not able to do that on a gimbal or a slider. Shoulder mounts are best for getting shots where you want a little bit of natural movement in your shot instead of just being tied down to a tripod. But when you move with the shoulder mount, it does add a bit of shakiness to your footage, so keep that in mind. Shoulder mounts can cost anywhere from $50 to a few hundred dollars, again, realizing that the cheaper ones are made out of materials that are easier to break and won't last as long. Another thing to add is that a lot of the newer cameras are coming out with in-camera stabilization or IBIS for short and there are a lot of lenses out there that are stabilized as well. The newer iPhones for example have in-camera stabilization that make it so that you don't necessarily need a gimbal to get smooth shots and there are some lenses out there with built-in stabilization that make it easier to get smooth handheld shots. Here's a comparison of a lens that I have that doesn't have stabilization versus a lens that does have stabilization to give you a feel for how much it helps. So if you're only shooting handheld or can't afford a gimbal quite yet, I'd recommend getting a camera or some lenses that have built-in stabilization. And although this built-in stabilization helps, it still won't give you perfectly smooth shots like what a gimbal or a slider can do. Another tip for getting smooth looking shots is to use warp stabilizer inside Premiere Pro. 
Now, this should be a last resort because sometimes it doesn't look very good, but if you have a shot that's too shaky, you can put warp stabilizer on it and help smooth it out a little bit. But it's always better to try to get it right when filming and not have to fix it in editing, so keep that in mind. So again, when doing the research for which stabilizers you want, make sure that you check out the reviews of what people are saying about each one, the pros and the cons to help you make the best decision. These are different tools used for different purposes, and eventually you'd want to get to the point where you could own all the stabilizers that I've mentioned in this video, but if you're just starting out, I would ask yourself what types of videos you'll be shooting most, and then get the stabilizer that you need most for those types of videos, and then continue to purchase additional stabilizers as you go. That's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next one.